Before continuing, don't forget to press the subscribe button first to keep up with our other interesting content. Hi, FIFA football lovers. So far, we know that rivalry occurs in every sport competition, be it at the club level, fans, even to the players. Even in football, the rivalry between players has been going on for a long time, and it is shown by the fierceness of the referee to be the best for its other. In the following, we will present the fiercest player referees in terms of achievement and competitiveness from decay to decay. The active period of football with the emergence of great teams and players. The 1950s were so dominated by Real Madrid that rivalries tend to be non-existent. However, in the 1960s, Real Madrid's reputation began to decline and other teams began to show their presence in the European and World Arena. At this time, the Champions League, or when it was known as the European Cup, also gave rise to a team that dominated, namely Benfica. Benfica, led by Eusebio, its Portuguese region, has proven to have produced five finals in the period 1961 until 1968 by winning two times. However, there is one name that always seems to be the stumbling block for Eusebio, namely one of the best players from England, Bobby Charlton. How not? Charlton managed to at least towards two important matches in Eusebio's career, namely during the 1966 World Cup semi-finals, whereas we know Eusebio with the Portugal national team performed extraordinary in the tournament. In fact, they are the favorites after being able to beat Brazil at that time, advancing to the semi-finals with confidence that they must lose to England, the hosts, and Eusebio's tears at that time was one of the phenomenal moments because Portugal's chains of becoming world champions were so wide open at that time. And in the 1968 European Champions Final, Bobby Charlton again toward serious struggles by winning with Manchester United by beating Benfica in a final with a score of 4-1, ending Benfica's dominance in that decade. Even on the individual side, the competition for the Ballon d'Or was also shown by both of them. After during that decade, their names always adorned the favorites to win the prestigious title, and they each won one title, Eusebio in 1965 and Bobby Charlton in 1966. It seems that in the 1970s, the name John Cruyff competed firstly with Franz Beckenbauer. Cruyff, with his total football philosophy, became Beckenbauer's mortal enemy at club, national, and individual levels. Cruyff was so dazzling with his Ajax in the early 1970s, managed to win the European Champions Cup three times in a row from 1970 until 1973. But the turning point chance when Wacom Power with Germany and Bayern Munich began to show existence as the best team at that time. The 1974 World Cup, which was a favorite for the Netherlands, had to be surprised with the German resistance in the final, and in the end had to accept the defeat of Germany. At the club level, Bayern Munich broke the dominance of Ajax and took turns to dominate by becoming European champions three times in a row. Kruf was already playing with Barcelona at that time, compete closely with Beckham Bauer in the prestigious Ballon d'Or award, where in the 70s, Kruf won three titles and Beckham Bauer two titles. This is really something extraordinary, as we know both of them are not only football players, but also founders of philosophy in football with Kruf's total football and Beckenbauer's libero play. In fact, their competition continued as coaches in the 80s until 90s era, where both of them were equally successful as coach. The rivalry between the two 
will always be remembered as one of the fiercest rivalries in the history of football. If the two rivalries between decades involved multinational rivalries, the decade of the 80s was marked by the golden era of Serie A, where the Italian league was the most prestigious league in the world and famous stars wanted to play there. Two of fiercest rivalries present a duel between Michel Platini, the French legend who was so victorious in the early 1980s with the Juventus and France. Platini even became the first player in history to be able to win the Ballon d'Or three times in a row before being broken by Lionel Messi. Platini's ability at the time was indeed extraordinary. He broke Juventus into a very terrible team. Not only that, France in his era was broke to win their first international tournament in Euro 1984. Did you know that, in that era, Juventus first first resistant when Napoli, the arrival of the phenomenal Diego Maradona in 1984. The arrival of Maradona seemed to disturb the king of Platini, who has become setting a top score two times in a row. Platini, in the 1984-1985 season, also still won his third Capocanieri in a row. However, the name Maradona continued to start the list of top scorers and disrupt the existence of Juventus in Serie A for many years. Maradona's efforts were not in vain after being able to win Serie A twice, since the arrival of Maradona and Platini's name began to replace with Maradona's existence. At the level of 1986 World Cup national team, it was a two-player trophy grown where Platini had to settle for not meeting Maradona in the final after France had to submit in the semi-finals to West Germany as we know it was Argentina who came out victorious. In fact, it was said by Platini himself that the rivalry between Platini and Maradona was a very fierce rivalry in the 80s era when remembering the rival who died in 2020. There were many rivalries present in the 90s, but there were two names that competed consistently but in terms of achievement, leadership, and physically, namely Roy Kahn and Patrick Vieira. Roy Kahn who carries the Manchester United flag and Patrick Vieira who carries the Arsenal flag are eternal mortal enemies. It all started in 1996 and 1997 competition until the early 2000s where they were known as leaders who were not afraid of each other. Physical, psychological to charisma are at stake every time Manchester United's big duel brings Arsenal together. Not infrequently quarrels and fights often occur between the two not only on the field but even in changing halls. This is natural, in addition to the two player with strong characters, both of them carry the name of a club that has consistently competed at the top in the English league for the decade. Imagine from the 20 matches recorded between the two in history, 7 wins, 7 losses and 6 draws were recorded by both of them. It's really an impressive record for the first referee between the two. Not only that, but of them are still war football legends beyond the things above. Imagine Roy Kane was awarded a brilliant achievement with Manchester United by being able to wipe out all titles with the Red Devils, as he broke the treble for Manchester United in 1999. Fiera is even better, not only at the club level as one of the prestigious titles. In national team level also managed to bring France to win the 1998 World Cup and Euro 2000, including at club level the invisible Arsenal, a fantastic achievement. However, these two will always be remembered as a strong central midfielder, excellent defensive abilities, and legend who possessed extraordinary leadership and had a dog and cat rivalry that will, we will probably always miss.
competition in the Millennium Century also gave rise to extraordinary competition between players. Many rivals are trying to beat each other. Famous names such as Zidane, Ronaldinho, to Henry Nistroy are not exception. But there is one fierce rivalry that has lasted a long time and is fierce both at club and national level even though the two have never played in the same league, none other than Gianluigi Buffon and Iker Casillas. Although both made their professional football debut in 1990s, the fierce rivalry with the two began in the early 2000s when Buffon was in Juventus uniform, who often dwelt with Casillas as well as when the fan Italy met Spain. Imagine they met 18 times in recorded history where the two goalkeepers were not in the same league. Fred broke them together. 18 games, Cassias a slight advantage with 8 wins, 6 losses, and 4 draws over Buffon. However, Cassias wins more at national team level than at the club level where Buffon is superior at club level. Both are believed to be the best goalkeepers of their era. Casillas is one of the most successful goalkeepers with a series of titles that even Buffon cannot match. But at the level of play and consistency, Buffon is the king. The two of them compete fiercely, but what fascinates world football is the charisma and grace between the two. When their team wins, they will cheer up the losing team, and vice versa. It's a few of the best sportsmanship between rivals and teammates. It was fitting that their 15-year rivalry became the fiercest rivalry in the goalkeeper sector and one of the best in the history of football. Seems appropriate that the rivalry between Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi is the best rivalry in this decade and perhaps in the history of football. The fierce, hot, and fierce competition both at club and individual level brought the two of them to run the hottest rivalry in history. Imagine, since 2008 for more than 10 years Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo have only alternately won the Ballon d'Or title, with 5 titles for Ronaldo and 6 titles for Messi. The rivalry was even more fierce in the late 2000s and early 2010s when Ronaldo moved to Real Madrid with his Barcelona's eternal rival. The duel of the two players was inevitable. Beating each other and even hot duels took place between the two camps and their players in the El Clasico title to show who was the best. Even the top scoring event, both of them are competing to score goals even records that other players cannot break. But Real Madrid and Barcelona proved their existence as the two of the best teams at that time and ruled the decade thanks to the presence of these two stars. A total of Ronaldo had to settle for only beating Messi 11 times, losing 16 times and drawing 9 times. But in fact Ronaldo, who is known as the real robot who puts forward a hard work ethic and Messi, who is believed by many to have the best football talent, are the fiercest rivalry in the century, like Pele and Maradona, who played in the same era. Football lovers will always remember the heat and power of the rivalry between the two, and whether in the future there will be someone who can replace the throne of the two of them. It is yet to be seen who will dominate the rivalry of the decade this time, with Kylian Mbappe being the strongest candidate to show his existence as the best player of the decade. Names like Erling Haaland, the pill for it, ready to balance opponents for Mbappe. However, it is the consistency and quality that will prove by the time will succeed to the throne of the next rivalry.